All right. And sorry to freak you out by flipping through the slides real quick. All right, so Colin. Uh, so if you don't know Colin instead, uh, he's kind of our Bitcoin cash guru, I would say. He's also doing a, uh, he's filming a documentary. I'll let him kind of talk more about what you're up to maybe briefly. Um, and he's going to talk about the Bitcoin cash drama unfold. Here you go. Let me get your slides ready real quick. All right, so... Uh, yeah, so I'll be covering the Bitcoin Cash hash war um, and what the hell happened with that. Um, so I'm a freelance filmmaker. Um, I'm a Bitcoin Cash uh, promoter, I would say. I made a bunch of Bitcoin Cash videos. Um, here is an ad I did for Geno's. Oh, silence. Yeah, uh, you get the gist of it. Uh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I've been in Bitcoin since 2013. Um, I've bought stuff with it online um, and uh, just always use it as money. And so I think that's a very important thing for Bitcoin to have. So that's kind of why I fall in line with the Bitcoin Cash um, vision. Um, so what's a hard fork? I'll just go over this real quick. Um, it's when basically a project um, splits into two um, because of incompatible rule set. So maybe some people want some certain features that other people don't. Um, they can split away from each other. Um, if people agree um, that they all want to upgrade, the, the hard fork will happen, and then the minority chain will just die. Um, and so um, what happened on August 1st, um, 2017, Bitcoin Cash originally forked from BTC, um, from Bitcoin, and um, basically the fees were very high. The blocks were getting full. Um, and so the base block size for um, Bitcoin Cash was raised from one megabyte to eight megabytes um, at the time. So um, in theory, it could handle eight times more transaction throughput. Um, and the split was primarily led by Amri Sachet of Bitcoin ABC. Um, most notable participants, uh, Roger Veer, he's the CEO of Bitcoin.com. I'm sure everybody's um, heard or seen of him. Um, Amri Sachet. Uh, again, head developer at Bitcoin ABC, which is the main Bitcoin Cash software implementation. Um, and then on the other side of this uh, fork is Craig Wright. He claims he's Satoshi. Um, he even hired David Bowie's PR firm to help him promote that he's Satoshi. Um, he started his company called Enchain. Um, and then kind of his uh, business partner is Calvin Irie. Um, he's a billionaire from an online gambling empire. Uh, recently got into Bitcoin in the last year or two, and he owns his um, mining firm and media outlet called Coin Geek. Um, this just kind of goes over uh, hard forks again. Um, I kind of already went over that. Um, so what, what, what was planned for November 15th? So this is when the actual Bitcoin Cash um, split into two. Um, Bitcoin Cash has an uh, upgrade every six months, uh, planned upgrade, planned hard fork to introduce new features. Um, this, so the plan for November 15th was actually locked in by ABC um, August 14th. Um, and uh, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, which is the competing client to ABC with Craig Wright, um, it was announced literally the next day um, by Craig and his company. And um, yeah, the previous six months ago, uh, the block size was raised at 32 megabytes. Um, and so the basic technicals, I won't go into these too much. Uh, Bitcoin ABC keeps the block size where it is. Um, it has a thing called DataSig Verify, which is essentially just another way to program Bitcoin. Um, and then canonical transaction ordering, which is essentially a way to order transactions within a block to optimize um, basically the size of the blocks. And then Bitcoin SV um, has a 128 megabyte max block size and these opcodes that I don't know what they do, but they were in the original Bitcoin. Um, and so, yeah, so uh, we kind of come to uh, the disagreement um, between Craig Wright and Roger M. Or it's obviously more complicated than that, but those are kind of the two big main players in this. Um, and Craig basically said that um, you split and we bankrupt you. So he wanted Bitcoin Cash to stay together and that if they split, that he would essentially bankrupt them. Um, and so what was happening um, coming up to the fork, um, CoinGeek, who is um, Craig-affiliated Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, um, and SVPool, 
and BMG pool. So basically the red, green, and blue were all Satoshi Vision, Vision BSV um, affiliated. And so it's kind of strange. So basically what they were doing here um, was that they were only mining Bitcoin Cash and they were not mining BTC at all. And basically um, this was them posturing. Um, this was them saying, hey, look at all of our hash power. They have, we have dedicated to Bitcoin Cash. We care about the security of the network. But they were throwing away literally millions of dollars to do this um, because basically since they were mining it so much, um, the difficulty on Bitcoin Cash went up, which means it was harder to find a block, which means you have to spend more electricity to find a block, which means that the profitability goes down. And so basically the more hash power they threw at it, the less money they made. And so this obviously drew away everybody else that actually wanted to make money. And so this is Calvin preparing for the hash war um, with yoga. So what he's saying here is, with the minds of the miners not open to miners' choice and Nakamoto consensus, I now believe that hash war will be the new norm. So basically what they're saying with Nakamoto consensus is that miners choose, which means that if you have the most hash power, you can do what you want. What they kind of, what Kelvin and um, affiliates kind of failed to wrap their head around is that Bitcoin Cash is a minority chain. So back to this, you can switch between BTC and BCH at any time because they share the same mining algorithm. And so, Nakamoto consensus, I guess. And uh, this is kind of the first big breakup. Uh, this is an email Craig Wright sent to Roger Veer. Um, basically, if you want ABC, you want shit coins, welcome to bankruptcy. It was nice knowing you. Um, also, I am Satoshi. Um, and then there's a little thing hidden down there at the bottom. Um, so yeah, this was kind of their first breakup, uh, if officially, I suppose. Um, so there's Bitcoin Jesus. Um, so yeah, the hash war started. Um, and the yellow line here is uh, ABC, and the um, red is Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. Um, and uh, basically what happened was Bitcoin.com threw a bunch of their hash power at Bitcoin Cash right at fork time. and that's what the top one is. The top one is real-time hash rates, and the bottom one is accumulated proof of work. So the bottom one is really the most important because that's basically how secure overall the whole chain is. So basically, BCH, BCH, ABC, um, beat Bitcoin Satoshi Vision at Nakamoto Consensus, miners' choice, their own game. Um, and so we'll just go to this real quick because it's funny. Oh, there's no audio. Never mind. Um, you've been doing both physically and mentally to prepare for this hash war which is coming in about two weeks time yeah so I've been doing a lot of yoga in Thailand uh, I think this is like the most important stuff you can do to be absolutely ready for the hash war <laughs> so that's that's Amri Sachet of Bitcoin ABC so um, yeah he's trolling so he's trolling Calvin uh, so this is the head developer of Bitcoin ABC um, so um, yeah, actually helped uh, shoot that. So uh, where did it go? It is right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll go to the commercial. George sits serenely in his barber chair. Suddenly, he realizes he's left his wallet at home. How would he be able to pay for him and his son and his haircuts? Would he have to sweep the floor after hours? Would the barber just shave his head? Or maybe he would be publicly shamed. Noticing Andy gesturing wildly towards the mirror, George pleads for his help. Andy smugly opens his Bitcoin Cash wallet and sends his Luddite father exactly two haircuts worth of Bitcoin Cash. Hey, thanks, man. Bitcoin Cash, the future of money today. Thank you. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, uh, essentially the hash war was won by Bitcoin ABC. Um, and this is what was going on during the hash war, actually. Um, and so it was actually super unprofitable to mine on both chains because there was so many miners on the chain. Um, people that were mining BSV were throwing away so much money if, compared to just mining BTC, like 400% more profitable. Like they were... Millions and millions of dollars were just burned fighting in the fighting in the great hash war. 
Um, and then this is Calvin saying that only coin geek him use Nakamoto consensus. ABC's ch side cheated with hash manipulation. So essentially, he said they cheated, um, but apparently not all is fair in love and hash wars. And so this is the current hash power. Uh, this is pulled from today. Um, on the left, you have BCH um, with a normal rat, uh, profit seeking, I suppose you could say. And then on the right, you have uh, Bitcoin SV, which is mostly, again, just Calvin's companies. And then actually some unknowns have just popped up in the last couple of days. Um, I think it's actually 30% more profitable to mine on coin on BSV right now, um, but miners do not want to because essentially um, poison box. So this is essentially when you throw a giant wad of transactions at the network and it essentially crashes nodes because it's just too much data. And so a lot of miners don't want to take that risk, especially when the, the price of Bitcoin Satoshi Vision is so volatile they don't know when they're their Coinbase coins that they would receive from mining the block would actually come through. So it's, it's very risky for miners to mine on Satoshi Vision right now. Yes. How big is the um, I think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 a 64 megabyte block has been mined. Um, there's kind of some weird things happening with that though. A lot of that, so basically the, the network bottleneck comes in the propagation to the mempools, so before it gets put into the block. And so a lot of these big blocks were basically like 40 minutes to an hour after the last block, so it kind of had time to catch up. But if the regular every 10 minutes came through, it's, it just wouldn't happen. Um, and so this is current prices. Um, you can see the ABC won the... BCH and Bitcoin Cash brand, if you want to call it that. Um, and Bitcoin SV has their own logo dragon, and it's called BSV. Um, and then just a quick note, um, Bitfinex calls it BAB. Um, it's the new Bcash, um, which is derogatory in a sense, some people think. Um, basically, Bitfinex was actually the same people that coined the word Bcash, so now they're trying to call it BAB, BAB. Uh, that's BCH. They're calling it BAB now. Um, so just some full philosophical differences. A Bitcoin Cash wants to optimize the protocol, uh, users first from the ground up, um, focus on innovation on the chain, and that Bitcoin is permissionless. And then Bitcoin Satoshi Vision basically wants to lock down the protocol. They don't want it changed. Uh, they want to get the big businesses on first. Um, they really want to focus on getting the businesses um, and go back to Bitcoin 0 0.1 like Satoshi originally. Um, his original vision, and basically they've kind of been, the rhetoric has been they want to make Bitcoin legal and that you shouldn't be able to do illegal things using Bitcoin. So, um, The arguments against, um, some people think that Bitcoin Cash is centralized through the ABC development team. Um, they put in these things called checkpoints um, during the hash war, which is basically a protection against um, attacks from Bitcoin Satoshi Vision and the Kelvin's hash power. Um, and apparently, Bitcoin Cash doesn't care about stability. There's unstable economics, and they're strained from the original um, Bitcoin. Um, arguments against Toshi Vision is that it's centralized around fake Toshi slash Craig Wright, um, poison blocks again. Uh, they just ha they're having their Coin Geek conference like this week actually, um, and there's this thing called Miner ID that they are trying to put in. Basically, you have to basically you have to identify yourself as a miner, which is which is, yeah. Um, and then CoinGeek is literally fake news. Um, they've <laughs> lied many times, and um, they are not a reliable news source, so I will say that publicly because they are not. Um, here are some attacks that Craig Wright has, um, has uh, threatened, I suppose. He's going to take down BTC and ABC and everybody that doesn't agree with him. And proof of social media, uh, this is a quick uh, personal antidote. Um, there's been a lot, a lot of trolling. Um, I've been within the Bitcoin Cash community for basically since it started, and the amount of just anonymous trolls that come into tra chat rooms, Twitter, has just, in favor of Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, has just been absolutely insane um, and thought it was uh, worth mentioning. So we can open up to Q&A. Yeah. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. 
So he's asking about uh, ABC cheating, cheating during the hash war. Uh, basically, they were claiming that um, Roger of Bitcoin.com rented hash power um, and that that's not, not going to consensus when in Roger actually came out with a video saying that CoinGeek actually came to him to rent hash power. So there's a lot of goalposts moving. Yes. Yes. Uh, I suppose you can call that consensus. Everybody, I suppose. Exchanges are a big part of it, yes. Exchanges, businesses, users. Uh, there's been a lot of forks off BTC as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the big complaint. I actually didn't really touch on it um, about this whole hash war is that essentially the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem shut down because nobody knew what the hell was going to happen because there was no replay protection. Um, and that's when you can't, one transaction on one chain cannot be valid on the other. Um, and so uh, it's it's based on wallet now. A lot of a lot of ones will keep doing the replay protection, so they will send both of them. Um, but a lot of them are just sending ABC. So and right now, it's recommended if you've been holding Bitcoin Cash is to split split them and have them in separate wallets. Um, yeah, this whole fork has not been user friendly, and it's been instigated by um, one side. So. Uh, I think most exchanges are opening with withdrawals and deposits now. Yes. Yes. BitPay did reopen, yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, if we could give Colin a round of applause, please. Th uh, thank you so much. So, ironically enough, uh, Craig Wright, the guy that he was mentioning, is the only person to, block, to have blocked me on Twitter. So, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of weird. Weird stuff, right? Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, I want to introduce our next speaker. This